This is absolutely savage talk. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Long time no see as they say. Um, it's been seven months since I last made a car related video and I want to get back into making some car content. Now, what better video to start off with than a new car? Now, not just any car, it's, I believe there's less than 50 of these cars in the UK. They are typically called a Holden HSV GTS to most people, but in Britain, Holden don't have any dealerships, so they were sold through the Vauxhall dealerships as a Vauxhall VXR8 and this one is pretty much the last one probably one of the more sought after ones as well and it's actually what I've ended up purchasing so uh, why would I buy one of these in the UK um, you don't tend to see them I've never seen one in fact in my life other than the ones that I've gone to see to buy so um, only usually ever one or two up for sale at any one time and uh, anyway I've got the car, let's turn the camera around and I'll show you what's so special about this Holden HSV. Being part of GM, they were actually sold through the Vauxhall dealerships, but it's actually got very little to do with Vauxhall, as far as I can tell. Um, I'll show you the cool parts on the car. We'll walk around the car, I'll show you the interior, I'll explain why I buy it, why I bought it, why I love these cars and then we're going to take it for a blast so you can see what it's all about so let's start off with the front now when i first saw these cars i thought what a funny looking thing but it's a bit like shrek you know he's ugly but we love him <laughs> i say he's ugly i actually think it's a really really smart looking car now when i was in the market for a car i've wanted for a very very long time a v8 now i didn't want some lazy V8, some lazy old Rover, you know, I wanted a proper V8. Now, I can pretty much narrow that down into the C63, the E63, or the BMW M5s. That's because I love my saloon cars, I wanted rear wheel drive, but I wanted manual as well. I'm not a massive fan of German cars. Now, I respect the engineering, but I just want something with a bit more personality. and. The VXR rates, I've always had an interest in them and personality, they are absolutely full of it. So that's why, or part of the reason, I ended up purchasing one of these cars. Now, in motorsport, these are not really seen in Europe, but in Australia, these are quite a big deal. So they are raced around Bathurst. Um, you probably heard of V8 supercars. If any of you do iRacing, um, on your racing simulator, I'm sure you would have seen V8 supercars on there. As you'll know, it's Ford versus Holden, and this would be the Holden sort of road going version of that car. Now, looking at the front, we've got massive 20 inch alloy wheels, and as you can see, those brakes they are enormous. Um, pretty much designed to stop this car from you know near 200 mile an hour um, obviously looking down the side then very big car very long car looking at the rear then another 20 inch wheel so we've got 275 35 20 wheels and they are continental sport contact twos currently fit so um, I purchased it through a Vauxhall dealership they do tend to specialize in these cars it's called Bellinger and uh, yeah they fit those tires as the other ones that come from factory on this car now lots of HSV detailing look the true identity of the car does rear its head quite often if you look around so yeah we got the HSV there coming down here We've got the four quad exhausts and then obviously down this side of the car it's the repeat of the other side now before we start it up and before we get inside um, let's just pop the bonnet and I'll show you the best bit about the car and that is the mighty engine now 
if we look here look how far back the dashboard is so I'm sat there that is all engine bay that's quite you know quite the sizable amount of space really so you might be thinking what's in there well it's no 1.2 litre three cylinder engine so let's take a quick look at what's actually under there And there we have it. The engine is actually a Chevrolet LSA. Now these are a factory supercharged LS and they have the aluminium block. So you add the LS1, then after that the LS2, after that the LS3, then after that the LSA. Now they did sell the other LSs with superchargers or factory upgrades but this LSA I believe is built from the ground up as a supercharged engine so if we look down here i don't know if you've ever worked on cars but that crank pulley is absolutely enormous and the intake pipe i've never seen one as fat as that it must be six inches wide but i suppose it's got a 6.2 liter v8 with the supercharger that it's got to feed with it so when you think about that that's quite a big engine isn't it to try and tame now, yet again, the HSV, as I was talking about, so I'll cover all the chassis codes, but you've got HSV there. Yeah, holding through and through, and then Chevrolet engine, Chevrolet running gear, pretty much. So, um, really stout engines, and these drivetrains, I've seen them. Some of the Aussies are pushing 1,500 horsepower on standard drivetrain, so, you know, they are well built. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to come inside and have a look at the interior. So um, we've got nice suede Alicantra looking panels here, electric windows, we've got a Bose sound system and uh, obviously with the car only having 28,000 miles on it, it's um, you know in a remarkable condition. Um, we've got the VXR seats, so um, in Australia they would have Holden there and you can actually buy most people actually fit the Holden uh, headrests because you can buy them as a kit so here we've got the Holden badge on the steering wheel um, we've got quite a lot of gadgets in here as well so looking here we've obviously got our instrument cluster the HSV and the Alicantra and leather dashboard we've got faux carbon fibre as they call it but basically it's fake carbon fibre um, as I showed to you or you will see in the driving clip we've got the gauges here for oil pressure and boost pressure we've got the heated seats and yeah, I think that's pretty much it from a ModCon's point of view. Okay, so to start the car, we just gotta press here. So it says engine start, stop there. Foot on the brake, foot on the clutch. Oosh, as you can see, quite the beast. So, I'm not sure if this is picking it up. It is picking it up we've got, here it is, a heads up display. So um, only the driver can see this, nobody else can see it, unless you're right here. So if I press this button, we've got different modes. So that's pretty cool. Saves you having to look down when you're busy trying to hold on tight. Here again, we've got the HSV infotainment system and there's quite a lot of cool gauges on there it's got built-in track timer um, built-in um, gauges boost you know cool down um, coolant temperatures GPS lap time tracking all that sort of stuff it tells you if you're up a sector down a sector I believe it actually connects to the heads-up display as well so you can imagine that's pretty cool on a track day Ok, 
Okay, so we're going to go for a little spin in the uh, HSV. One of the main features, what I found actually really good about the car so far, is um, down here. So if you have a look down here, we've got driver mode. Now, my GR Yaris had a similar thing, but it was not quite as um, much of a difference in the different modes as on this car. Um, basically, if you look on the screen here, if I change the mode, so we're in sport now, and we've gotten into performance, <coughs> It changes the traction, the stability, the steering, the dampers, the exhaust tone. Changes pretty much everything about the car. And uh, it is a real noticeable difference. So, some of my track cars, I'll take them on my favorite B roads, like my Evo, for example. And it was, to be honest, not very good up there because it was too stiff. Whereas in this car, obviously, you get the best of both. Now, we're going to put it into track. We're going up a steep hill. So we're going to look forward. We're going to get a nice... Uh, I suppose we get to hear the sound of the car and the way it pulls. So there's absolutely savage torque can obviously feel in the car the rear end flipping <laughs> moving all over the place but the beauty of this particular model of HSV I think it's the only one that has it it's kind of got like an active yaw control a bit like what the Evos have on the rear diff so if the rear does let loose Within reason, the car can sort of send power left and right, and you can kind of feel the car doing this. Now, I don't know if that's just driver mod or the car, but um, I think it's probably a bit of both. But uh, it, it is quite confidence-inspiring, which you wouldn't really expect out of a car like this. Now, down here, we've got my oil pressure and also my supercharger. So it shows you how much boost we're making. So if I pop it down a gear, as you can see, the boost climbs up there. And that's actually from factories installed like that. I believe the naturally aspirated versions have oil pressure and battery voltage down there. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a nice bit of gentle burble mapped into the car. We're gonna do a bit of a pull now and let's see what it accelerates like. Savage talk. It doesn't rev very high, which does catch me out. I think it revs to like barely 6,000 revs. But uh, yeah, the car's uh, really good fun. Ooh, I can hear the exhaust popping. I do like that sound. But yeah, a really nice car. You know, it's just so much character to the car and um, I'm very happy I bought it. Um, I have been thinking about getting one of these for quite a long time and uh, I'm glad now that I did. So, hope you enjoyed that video. Really excited to enjoy the ownership experience of this car. Now, I've got quite a few videos planned I'm gonna review some of the amazing hidden roads that I've found around here. Now, what would be better car to try out some very technical B roads on than a 6.2 litre V8 supercharged rear wheel drive car. It's gonna be a bit of a handful on these tight Welsh roads, but I think it's gonna make for some good content. And if you're interested in what I've got planned moving forward, drop us a comment down below, tell me your suggestions. 
tell me what you think about the car i'm really keen to hear what you think um and just a small thing as well if you have subscribed for the cleaning videos that i had put up that was a bit of an experiment to see how people would respond um, it went quite well people were actually liking the videos and um, subscribing so um, i've put those videos now on a dedicated channel called lewis cleaning services i'll put that in the description of this video um but for the for the most part this video this channel has always been car content and that's what is pretty much going to be resuming from this point forward so uh, hope that clarifies any confusion thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one cheers guys